Hello, it's Tim Coddington, the Wildernut. Today, I thought I'd bring you through the camper on my truck and show you the solar system that I installed over the summer. I upgraded from a 200 watt system to a 640 watt system, and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, so I'll bring you through and show you the components that I chose and why I chose them and show you the capabilities. All right, come on, let's go. Now, the panels I chose for the roof are Renji 160 watt panels. I have four of them. I had a custom tray welded up for it, aluminum one and I have a total of 640 watts. And well, the solar panels are wired in series. The wires come down and they go into this electrical box here that I'm out on the back. The solar equipment was on the inside previously when it came with the camper, but I wanted to modify it so if I wanted to put more batteries in, I could. So I took the charge controller and equipment out of the inside, put it on the outside here in this box. And if I ever want to upgrade the batteries to uh, uh, I can double my capacity. I can do that without having to, you know, rework everything and redo all this wiring and all that because, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. So anyway, the, the wires come down, they go into this box to this breaker. So if I want to cut the power off to the system here, I can shut this breaker off and that shuts the power off coming from the panels into the charge controller, which also keeps the power from going to the uh batteries because there's no power coming in. Uh, this is a Victron MPPT 150. That means that it can take 100 volts from the solar panels and it can output 50 amps to the batteries. And this plug there coming off the bottom of it is for Bluetooth. I have a Bluetooth adapter on the inside. This does have Bluetooth built into it, but in this metal box, it doesn't work that well. Like I, I can't get to it when I'm driving down the road and that's so I can check status. So I had this left over from my previous system because I did not have built-in Bluetooth and that plugs right in. And now I can get to my, it's basically like a web page for the uh, charge controller to see how it's doing and uh, the capacity and all that uh, from my phone. And also the wires coming out there that say battery. The one's the ground, of course, and the red one is the power. And that 60 amp fuse there goes right through this switch. It's not, uh, that, that switch does not turn off the power to the battery because if I want to shut the power off to the battery, I just shut that breaker off. Uh, the line coming out the top there is fused at 100 amps. And that's what goes to my, my fuse panel on the inside. This little device here is called a shunt. And what that does, that, that's Bluetooth enabled as well, and we'll see all that later. Uh, that's a shunt, and that gives you an, a very accurate depiction of how much amperage is coming in and going out of the system. So if you're charging, it tells you exactly how much is coming in. And if you're discharging, it tells you exact how much is going out. And it gives you some cool calculations like amp hour is left and that sort of thing. And I'll go through all that here in a little bit. Uh, and that all goes to the inside. So. We'll go to the inside of the truck and I'll show you the batteries and what's going on in there. All right, we'll get the Dyson out of the way here. And here's the battery box. In the battery box, I have two Battleborn 100 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. And these things are nice. I really like them. There's two of them in here. I don't know if you can see the other one back there. Uh, I really enjoy these compared to my AGMs that I had. Uh, the AGMs, I had two 80 amp hour uh, AGM batteries, and with AGMs, you can only discharge those to 50%. So really, I only had 80 amp hours of capacity. With these lithium batteries, they're 100 amp hour each, and I can use 200 amp hours, all of it, you know, right down to zero, and then charge them. So I really increased my basically my range and my capacity of my batteries by going to these lithium ion. Now there is some catches to lithium and I'll talk about that. This here is that Bluetooth adapter I was talking about outside uh, that's plugged into the charge controller. And that, that puts a pretty good signal out and I can get to that from pretty much anywhere around here. And there's a little bit of the wiring and all that. I guess there's a fuse in here too for the batteries because it's something shorted out you want. You really want to have a fuse right on the lug if you can, but that wasn't possible with this. So I just have the shortest wire as possible because this wire here isn't fused, basically. Uh, if that were to break and touch something, that could cause a problem. But it's in there solid. It's nothing going to happen like that. Um, off of the charge controller also 
is this digital meter here. You can see I'm at, uh, let me get so I can see it here, 99.8% uh, uh, charge right now. And I also have a phone app that tells you all that too, and I'll go through all that. Um, basically what I run with this is my refrigerator. Uh, refrigerator's a uh, 45 quart refrigerator. There's no freezer or anything. And it's, it's pretty efficient. It's got some really good insulation on it. Uh, and I can run for probably five days with with no sun, and this thing would be just fine. If I was parked in a cave, that would run for five days. Longer if I, uh, you know, just a little bit of sun or a little bit of clouds, you know, or a lot of clouds. Uh, things that I charge are like my, my Jackery here. I charge that. That's for if I'm out working on my table outside or something. I need to have my laptop or... Um, I have JBL speakers, a few of those, so I want to keep those charged. I have some, you know, because I had the uh, the AGMs that didn't have much capacity. I have all these battery packs. These here I can run my laptop off of, and those are for phones and other things. I have uh, 18650 batteries that I use for, like, my headlamp and flashlight, camera battery, and a little router right there. And, of course, my, my Dyson. I have to keep that charged. It's, it's battery-powered. <laughs> All right, this is the Vectron application that goes on your phone. It works for Android or iOS. You see at the top there, it says Wilder Shunt. I'm Wilder Nuts, so I have to have things that say Wilder in them. Uh, the Wilder Shunt is that shunt outside, and that's what gives you the detail. I'll show you that. Uh, the Wilder Power BT is that Bluetooth adapter, and the Wilder Power is just the base unit of the charge controller. So let's look at the Wilder Shunt. It's connecting via Bluetooth right now, and it's at, you can tell it's at 100% state of charge. Uh, the voltage is 13.58. I have uh, 0.54 it's bearing of current going in. I'm getting 15 watts off the solar panels. You know, that's not much, but it's 100% charged. So sometimes, uh, like half the time, if it doesn't need a charge, the uh, onboard battery management system for the lithium-ion batteries will just take over, and it'll shut this down so it's not putting any voltage in and since the last charge it's uh, consumed 0.4 amp hours time remaining is infinite <laughs> not really as soon as you start turning things on that's going to go down and the temperature it does have a temperature probe on the battery itself and i'll go into detail about the temperature and lithium ion batteries here i'm going to go to the history page and you can see it just has a lot of data uh, the one i look at is about halfway down the right hand side uh, time since last full charge uh, right now it's 407 and it's been charged it, it's been charged five hours and 44 minutes ago that's like overnight it came to its first full charge five hours and 44 minutes ago so about a little after 10 o'clock 10 15 or so it was charged which is pretty good because I think when I woke up this morning it was at 86 percent because I was charging a bunch of things last night both JBLs my laptop I was doing some some work on the laptop so you know I was using some energy I had lights on and all that the refrigerator running uh when it was warmer out so that's pretty good you know 10 o'clock in the morning I'm fully or 10 15 in the morning and I'm fully charged uh on the last page there there's a bar graph that only works for your session so just pretty much when you when I turned it to this page or not this page but when I opened up the the application it started recording so you can keep that on you know if your, your phone doesn't time out like mine does and keep an eye on things I don't have to worry about it anymore because things work really well so we'll go back to the main page of the application and go to the Wilder Power BT and that's uh that's basically my charge controller you know it's not directly the charge controller but it's the device that's plugged into the charge controller so it's connecting via Bluetooth and there uh, we're actually getting 101 watts in off the panels. I just heard my refrigerator kick down, and that's why there's more on here than on the uh, the last one we were looking at. The voltage from the solar panels, you know, they're uh, up there wired in series, getting 68 volts right now, and it's pulling down 1.3 amps. It's just taking down what it needs right now because it's at 100% capacity. And it shows you the voltage and the current going into the battery. And it's that float state. Now on, on batteries, there's three stages. There's bulk, 
there's absorption and there's float. So when the batteries are, are drained a bit, it goes into a bulk charge and then it goes into absorption um, at a different voltage and then it goes into float. And float is just more, pretty much like a trickle charge basically that goes into the, into the batteries. Well, all right, that's all the equipment in a nutshell. Now I'll go into why I picked what I picked for the equipment. Um, I chose the lithium ion batteries because I wanted that longevity as I talked about before instead of having only being able to use half the capacity I can use all of the capacity of the batteries so you know why pay for it if you're not going to use it because it ends up being cheaper to get the lithiums in the end because you only have to buy half as much and I chose the Battleborns because they're just the best <laughs> you know looking around checking all the stuff and and doing my research uh, Battleborns are the best unless I could get like a Tesla power wall or something like that I think that'd be even better but you know maybe someday uh, and I chose Victron equipment for the rest of the stuff because uh, from my research I think that's the best as well and they do coordinate together they're they're set up to kind of be mated because they've designed the Victron equipment to work with the Battleborn batteries kind of specifically there's some settings that are pretty much perfect for the lift for the uh, Battleborn batteries uh, the size that I chose, like the 640 watt, they, oh my God, why do you need 640 watts? And you notice I didn't have an inverter. You know, most people have an inverter. I run everything off of 12 volts. Why? Because it's more efficient. Uh, when you have an inverter and you go to 110, you have loss. So I just designed my system around 12 volts. Now, I might go ahead and get an inverter, and that's why I left the room for the batteries, so I could get like an induction stove cooktop, like a dual cooktop and then I wouldn't have to use my propane <laughs> it'd just be free from the sun you know free from the sun is the best there's this great big nuclear reactor in the sky and people should be using it for everything you know charging their homes charging their their cars everything fossil fuels are bad they are I'll say it they're bad they kill people the fumes the uh, the pollution you know global warming People, you don't have to argue about that. You can't argue about pollution. Pollution is bad. Uh, you breathe that 2.5 particulate matter pollution, and that causes cardiovascular disease and all that. I'm a big solar guy, a big green energy guy. And not because of global warming, though. Just because it's clean. It's easy. It's from the sun. You don't have to pay for anything. After you buy all the equipment, it's free. There's, there's no extended cost. Except for me replacing the equipment after 30 years. But 30 years, I'm probably going to be dead in 30 years. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the, uh, the size of the solar panels, you think, I'm out here in the desert. Why do I need that much solar? You know, and you charge at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm a nomad. I travel to Michigan or other places in the summertime. And when I'm camping, like I'm out in BLM land right now, free camping, I free camp pretty much wherever I go, unless I want to stop someplace, uh, you know, camp around and see some people or something like that. Um, or up in Michigan, I do have a, uh, an off-grid camp. You can check out the video on my page. I don't, I don't know where to point. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> when I'm there, I, I'm parked in the shade too. So, you know, if it's shady or rainy or cloudy, I don't want to have to go drive my truck someplace and park it and wait and wait and wait until everything gets charged up. It can be raining and really cloudy, and I'll still be pulling, you know, 12, 20 watts. And those lithium ion batteries, they will suck every bit of that up and charge, you know, only with like 12 watts, 20 watts. It takes longer, of course, but that keeps up with my refrigerator. My refrigerator kicks on, it only draws 55 watts. So, and it kicks on, you know, depending on the temperature out. If it's warmer out, like say 80 degrees, it might kick on like uh, one time an hour for 15, 20 minutes, you know. So if it's running a third of the time, that's enough to charge that up with, with you know, 20 watts. 60 watts an hour basically um what are the choices did i make uh i'm being big for that and then i chose uh the charge controller size because at the maximum these panels at 70 degrees uh the maximum voltage is something like 86 volts so you know you have to stay under your voltage for your charge controller so 86 volts but what people don't realize if it was uh 20 degrees outside that goes up when it's colder they're more efficient so it can be a hundred volts going to there so i just uh, have that now the only one caveat that i've come across with lithium ion batteries is cold weather people say oh my god you, they're gonna ruin them in the cold weather 
Well, I have that breaker. So if it's if it's below uh, the Battleborn CEO says that the Battleborn batteries can be charged at 25 degrees. Now most lithium batteries they say 32 degrees. You know, at freezing, that causes a problem. It causes plating on the battery, and that pretty much just ruins the battery. It can't charge wherever it plates, so it just uh, makes it so it can't charge. <laughs> uh, so you know, if it if I woke up in the morning before the sun came up, and when I do, uh, if it was below uh, freezing, you know, if it's 32 degrees out, I would just shut that breaker off so it can't charge until it warms up. I don't camp where it's going to be below freezing all day. Uh, I mean, I don't want to. And if I did, I could still shut it off for five days and be fine, you know. Now, there is a workaround. Uh, Battleborn and other companies do make battery blankets that just uh, wire to your battery, and they're set to turn on when it gets to 35 and then shut off at 40. So if it gets down to 35, the battery blanket turns on, it warms the battery up, it only draws 15 watts, so that's nothing, uh, you know, for me anyway. Um, and it keeps the battery warm. Now, I cheat a little bit right now because I don't have blankets, and I've run into it. <laughs> really, it's been below freezing a lot since I left Michigan, Wisconsin this year, and about a month, month and a week ago or so, um, where it's been down below freezing at night. But I do have my propane furnace. I just open my battery door up on my uh, on my battery box there, and my furnace kicks on. I can turn the the vent so it blows some of the air inside by the battery, and it just keeps it warm. Unless you're out of propane, and that was an issue one time. Uh, so I just uh, turned the breaker off till morning. That was fine. Actually, one time I heat up a cast iron pan on the stove. I woke up at four in the morning and seen it was cold. I heat a cast iron pan up and I just stuck that in there. You know, workarounds. You got to be smart and be uh, adaptable. So what else? Uh, I love my system now. When I had the 200 watts on there and the small charge controller, it took forever to charge. And I had to go pull out in the sun, like I said. Uh, this is a pop-up camper so the front pops up independent from the back so when i had the 200 watt panel and i haven't seen anybody do this other people get take this idea you can just pop the back up and point the truck toward the sun and you get extra 20 degrees right there it gives you more sun you know you're pointing at it and the old panels i had so i could uh, adjust them like i could flip them up and point to the sun but then you got to get up on something, get up on the roof. I'm alone out in the middle of nowhere. It could be slippery, you know, cold, whatever, fall, break an arm, break a leg, be there for a long time. I didn't want to have to deal with getting up on anything, you know, because it was kind of sketchy. I was climbing up on my door, my my door, my, my windowsill, and, you know, doing a little rock climbing. That's not safe. So now they just stay flat all the time, and it charges really quick. Uh... I think that's it. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I uh, will reply. Uh, if you have any questions on design, you know, what size wires, what size fuses, all that. I did the education campaign and I'm pretty swift on that stuff now. And if you uh, would like to have any suggestions on what you might want to do on your off-grid uh, implementation, you know, if you have an off-grid place or a cabin or something like that, I can tell you all about that too. So, hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up for a like and go ahead and hit that notification bell icon for all so you can get all of the new videos that might be coming up in the future. All right. Well, have a good day. Wildernut, out.